it's a big, long... Past it. Yeah, right. It's easier. Right, good, 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 good. Whatever you say. No. Yeah, there's nothing left. I got to go now, Alex. Okay, welcome back to uh, the Ford for Parts uh, Sheviot stages here at Otterburn Ranges. We're located now um, near the end of Special Stage 9. We've lost 8, and so there was an incident on 7, and uh, we've lost 8, and we're on 9 now. This will be the last stage of us for today because we need to get back to the finish to celebrate the championship win and the championship class winners. But at the moment... After stage eight, uh, Peter Taylor is leading by 42 seconds from Jason Pritchard. Uh, Gordon Morrison is another 37 behind. Ross Busby is in fourth, uh, 150 behind, and Steve Simpson is in fifth. Six is Dave Hardy, seven is Mark McCulloch, eighth is Barry Lindsay, and ninth, Paul McKinnon. Tenth is Keith Robethan in the BMW M3. So, um, as it stands, if Pritchard can keep it going for the next four stages, 9, 10, 11 and 12, that'll be him crowned as our MSA Asphalt Pro Tyre champion. The, um, the sun is shining, the rain has stopped, although it does look terribly interesting. <laughs> Can you hear the first car in the distance? And we, uh, cars come down through the trees there, down into a 60 right, into this T-junction, turning left, and off away up the hill towards the end of the stage. Different kind of stage. Looks like the grip is very good here on this um, relatively new asphalt, uh, Ryan. Yeah, but as we've seen all day, the, the grip level is changing, isn't it? You know, we, we saw that some of the roads nearly dry about half an hour ago, and yet here we are in blazing sunshine, and yet we're, we're on a very wet surface again. So no second guessing what the conditions are like as uh, as we hear the first car coming down to us. Yeah, Peter Taylor in the Fiesta World Rally car has had a cracking day. He's, um, I think, more or less led from the off today. Uh, he's coped exceptionally well with the difficult conditions. Jason Pritchard probably driven a frustrated day, just had to keep it clean once he saw Harper off in the field on stage four. That was his sort of championship uh, de car into default mode and uh, just get through the day. Yeah, and what a what a year for Jason as well. Switching from historics, multiple British historic champion, now moved on to, on to tarmac, back into four-wheel drive and, uh, and doing the business. Yeah, and again, he used, uh, he used different cars on this championship. He used his uh, Super 2000 car, and he's used this um, 2005 Folk, uh, Fiesta Focus WRC, um, which is the same, same spec as the car that uh, Damon Cole started with. But um, looks good for the championship. Uh, they're talking about doing the same, same, more of the same next year with maybe a few changes and tweaks here and there, but generally same rounds, as I understand. Possibly the inclusion of another round, but uh, championship's been very strong. As here comes our leader, Peter Taylor and Andrew Ruffhead. On the limit in the Fiesta WRC. Banging down through the gears. Keeping it on the tarmac, neat and tidy. A little bit of uh, underbody flapping about, but nothing to worry about. What do you make of that then? Well, it's just amazing how much lift a World Rally car has. You know, we, we get used to talking about 17 and 18 spec World Rally cars and WRC, but, you know, you see these cars, they're so quick out of the corners and uh, much higher revving than the older two-litre car that we'll see in a minute. You know, it just sounds angrier, doesn't it? Yeah, first? it does, it does. It does sound the part, doesn't it? And driven exceptionally well there, in fairness. Let's see what Pritchard makes of it all. As you say, the car's a lot quieter. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, not as angry by any means, but very efficient. Probably one of the best cars that M Sport ever built, in my view. It had the influence of Marco Martin in there, who drove with an understeer as opposed to an oversteer. And it was a difficult car for people to get used to, but uh, no problems there. Here's Steve Simpson. Now, I don't think that's a World Rally car. That's an R5 Plus, isn't it? Yep, so based on an R5 car, I just checked before. Chassis number 217, if you'd like to know. 217, that's an interesting uh, little addition there that we didn't know for all you boffins. Chassis 217, as next up is our Subaru, the first of our Subarus. Number nine. This is uh, Gordon Morrison in the Subaru Impreza. Well inside the top ten, I think he was in about uh, fifth or sixth. Going into uh, this stage, Gordon Morrison and Callan, Callan McPherson in the Subaru Impreza. Actually up to third, I think, equal in his result he took here on the Tyneside stages a couple of months back. Well done. Here's another S Subaru, the Hardy car. This is number 11, Dave Hardy. The winner of the uh, Solway Coast Rally a little bit earlier in the year. And uh, and like you said, really very, very quick. Cars come down through the trees and a uh, nice little echo through the trees. Still a, still a relatively reasonable car to rally the Subaru. Parts are still pretty readily available. And you can still get quite a good passive handling car. Not too expensive to run. That doesn't, doesn't, uh, don't have to send it away every, every two rallies. As the um, R5 of Mulls, Paul McKinnon. The Staffer Tours car. He's going exceptionally well again in uh, we think an R5 car again. Just looking for the uh, for the number there. Where is he? Paul McKinnon and Robert Fagg in the Ford Fiesta. Yeah, and like you said, the Subaru is more production based, like the Mitsubishi. So it's still quite a lot of the standard components kicking about. Whereas, like you said, for for the Fiestas or the Focuses, you've got to go and see um, Mr. Wilson. You've got to pay the Malcolm added tax as the Subaru comes into view. Number 10, and that's uh, Mark McCulloch and Michael Hendry. Now, apparently, Mark McCulloch and John McCulloch are father and son. John is navigating for Dave Hardy, and Mark is driving his own car. So somebody sent us that earlier on. Thanks for that gem of information. The wonder of Facebook and messaging. We can find these things. And now it's turned out to be a lovely day for a while. The, the clouds have passed over. It's blue sky. It's, it's lovely. What was all the fuss about, Howard? Exactly. It's amazing to believe we had snow this morning. And the next car in the stage is the little Peugeot. 106, he's inside the top 10. Number 22, Barry Lindsay and Caroline Lodge. Little giant killing act going on there. Yeah, as we've come to expect from Barry Lindsay, really, he uh, actually won the Jack Frost rally earlier in the year in a, in a Steve Petch car. Uh, another Subaru here. Number 17, Lee Hastings and Cole Hastings. <laughs> His flashes on. I don't know if that's a, a mistake or he's got some kind of issue, but uh, he didn't seem to be going flat chat, but uh, may have some kind of problem. But uh, let's hope he can get through and uh, get a finish. Yeah, Barry Lindsay actually getting that uh, that drive in the SGP car as a, as a prize drive, I think, for, for winning uh, winning one particular championship, but went really well in that one off outing. Here's Murray Grayson in the Subaru. Murray be pleased to finish and get through. Just locking the back wheels there. Murray Grayson and his son, Mark. Driven, driven some fantastic Subarus in the past. I remember him in the ex Alistair McCrae Legacy in uh, K88 LNX, I think it was, followed up by some Group A Impressors as well. Yeah, he's had a fine array of cars, isn't he? Has, uh, I can't remember where he's from as well. Is he from Dalbiti? That's not, that's right. Do you remember the very narrow, yes. tricky little Horrible stage on the Scottish starting, restarting yes. out of Dumfries? Oh, it was a hell of a stage, wasn't it? Switch back, I used to call it. Yeah. Very different to the very, rest of the stages in that part different. of the world. Be interesting to see what that's like. <laughs> the Citroen, the Citroen C2R2 Max, 24, of Michael Harbour and Ian McDougall. 
going well in the little Citroen. Yeah, been a great little package over the years. The uh, the C2 uh, Citroen obviously supported a lot of the classes with uh, with the smaller cars. And here's the first of the Mark Twos. No, this is the Avenger. Sorry, got that wrong. 28, the Avenger. Kenny Moore and Richard Wardle. But you, you're probably probably right with your mistake in some ways because how often do you ever see a Hillman Avenger coming before a Mark II Escort? Yeah, what a, that's a cracking little Avenger. Fair play to the guy. I reckon we've got a BMW. This is the BMW of... Um, What's his name, the boy from Aberdeen? I did a couple of rallies with him, Keith Robethan. Keith Robethan and Ken Bills. A lot of power in that car. I mean, I don't know if you were, you were in Barbados earlier in the year, there was one of them out there with 420 horsepower and he left off the start lines and big black lines up the road. I can't remember his name, but it was wonderful to listen and watch. I was trying to follow him. Yeah, that's, what was his name? Darren, Darren Ken, no, I can't think of his name now, but some boy he was, fair play. Uh, what have we got looking, coming up? We could have Ricky Wheeler in the Escort. Brett Watson, by the way, was the BMW driver. Brett Watson, 31, is Ricky Wheeler and Martin McCabe in the Escort Mark II. We, have we seen Ross Busby? 20. I don't think we have yet because no, he, he's bad. been flying. He was up to uh, to fourth overall. I hope he's still going and does not have any problems. This is the Maestro. The Monda. The Meister. Or we'll just call it the Maestro. Number 35. Ross McCallum and James Ralph. In a very, very different Austin MG Maestro. Fair play to the guys. Yeah, definitely one of the fastest Maestros I've ever seen. Even when one was driven by Tony it's Pond, like a, Malcolm it's Wilson. Like a, it's like a Metro on steroids, isn't it, the Maestro? Just but pump I, up the volume. But I suppose an MG Metro did become the 6R4. Yeah, exactly. Talking to minis and 6R4s, here's Ray Cunningham in the Galway Mini Centre Mini 37. Ray Cunningham and Jarrod Gill in the Austin Mini Cooper S. And amazing to see how a, how a well-driven 1300cc car can uh, can be right up the order on a fast rally like this. Yeah, well, that's it. But I think bravery comes into play here. 38, Stephen Bethwaite and Anne Foster in the Vauxhall Nova Sport. I think as well here on Otterburn, from what I've seen here, this is actually my first visit to Otterburn in the many years I've been involved. Uh, from what I've seen, a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of local knowledge and understanding of being here before is a big advantage. Yeah, I think so. Knowing, knowing the bad bits, the yeah, bad bumps and the crests. Where the grip is and where the grip isn't and how the land lies and how the water runs. Massive, massive advantage. Another car known for giant killing performances as well, of course, the Vauxhall Nova yes, with uh, Dave Metcalf and Colin McRae, amongst Dave others. Metcalf, Colin McRae. Another little mini. This is the 39 version of Clive King and Anton Bird. And we mentioned it before, just 10-inch wheels, of course, on these minis. So uh, by the time you take a, a bit of a cut or uh, put two wheels in the ditch, you don't have much left. You know, you're touching the floor, aren't you, in fairness? Subaru, 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 36, Derek Blythe and Neil By in what looks like a very sort of standard N10, 12, 14, something around there, Subaru. There's so many evolutions been over the years, isn't there? Yeah, yeah followed, followed by the, uh, the Evo 6. Yeah, now the Evo 6 is uh, Graham Malthouse and Owen Malthouse, 41. Malthouse is all round. Nice, clean, tidy run there for them, guys. And as we said, the uh, the Ottoman military range has been uh, been part of rallying in this part of the world for forever. And it used to, uh, used to see the likes of Harry Bannon and Tony uh, Pond, Malcolm Wilson on the Mintex rally years ago. Yeah, you were telling me that earlier. I, uh, I, was, I wasn't actually aware of that. He is number 44. Greg Inglis. 
and Ian Parker in the Lotus Exige. It's been great to see all the uh, the marshals and all the volunteers out here today running the event. They've been kept very busy by all the action, and uh, it's uh, without these guys there would be no rallying. So a big thank you and heads up to the marshals and all the volunteers and all the helpers and everybody from the clubs that have made this event possible. Without you people, we wouldn't be able to do any of this. As 45 goes by, Drew Gallagher and David Crosby in the Subaru. Yeah, a difficult day for the marshals as well with the weather we've had. We'd have everything from uh, from snow to uh, to rain to uh, to sunshine. Yeah, and it's been extremely cold as well, and the wind chill has uh, kept us on our toes. But uh, yeah, massive amount of work goes into running these events. It's, it's just it's unbelievable to um, even think about the man hours it takes to have everything. Um, it's very interesting listening to the radio earlier on. The the radio crackled into. Uh, into life and you know everything's pre-organized they've got plans here plans for this plans for that and they've, you know try to cover all uh, possible ideas and incidents as the drop speed car comes through car 48 paul and julian Durokovic. and to be fair all these guys have to do is finish to win the championship and their class being chased by ridian daniels and thomas whittle in the little citroen c1 max I think, in fairness, both Paul Dorokovic and Ridian Daniels, all they have to do is finish tidy today to win their relevant classes in the championship. They've both been good supporters of all the all the rounds, done all the rounds, and had great time. And it's great to see them here uh, in on Sunday afternoon, looking like going to win their relative classes. Paul Dorokovic in the Drock Speed Mark II and. Ridian Daniels in the Citroen C1 Max. Possibly the best sounding cars on the rally, those two. As comes in now, does 52, the little mini, John Cressy and Martin Cressy. John Cressy, another experienced man, having done uh, done the RAC rally on a number of occasions, and I think he even had one Ian Grindrod co-drive for him. Did he really? On Mull, not, not on the RAC, but on Mull. Fair play, good old Grinny. Here's the little Puma, number 50. Gary Laverick and Phil Kennedy, Kenny, in the Ford Puma. Still breathing a bit heavy at the back, the Puma. So sponsored by Ford Parts, the event sponsor. We didn't see much of Trevor Gamble, who, who was in his uh, was in Super 2000 Polo. We saw him going once this morning, and we haven't seen him since, but uh, good to see the event sponsor sponsoring a car on event. Uh, this is uh, Steve Retchless in the Mark II, number 40. Steve Retchless and uh, Sasha Harriet. Again, I think um, going well in his class within the championship. It's been a good, a good gaggle of escorts fighting for the championship. Phil Turner, Steve Retchless, the Drock Speed boys, they've all had a great time supporting the championship. And there's a little band of guys got together there from all over the, uh, all over the country to... Uh, enjoy the MSA Pro Tire Championship. And if any anything underlines a variation in rallying, I think we've got it today when we've got minis mixing among Subarus, Avengers, Escorts. It's fantastic. And of course the minis are here for the H-A-R-C, uh, -H -H -E -C, whatever it is, the historic old stages championship uh, supporting the minis. 54 is the beautiful Mark II, Mark I RS 1600 of Paul Kendrick and Luke Green. Followed by the little Nova of James Thompson and Fenny Westlink. 56. Thinking of James Thompson, we saw his namesake touring car driver James Thompson in rallying for a while. Yes, he did a couple of rides with Peugeot, didn't he? And a few other drivers as well. And Peugeot 57 comes through. Uh, Adam Hanna and Wayne Wood in the Peugeot 205 GTI. And again, a, a, a real uh, staple of uh, club rallying really now, the 205. We've seen so many 205s during the years. We, uh, we used to see the one make championship with 60 205s out on an yeah, event. Pretty rare cars now, a bit like hen's teeth and fetching good money now, the 205. Very popular car. And if you can find a good one, they're worth a bit of money. Here comes the next escort. This is number 32. 
running down the order. This is uh, Phil Jobson and Jerry Hetrick in the Escort Mark II, running down the order. Obviously had some problems, but still going, still going hard. Some problems, as you mentioned, twin exhausts on him. Maybe a problem with noise at one point. Yes. Yeah, possibly. Or maybe he's running some kind of super duper motorcycle engine or something like that in there. <coughs> Here's the uh, the lovely little Astra rear wheel drive Mark Three. Yeah, Jeff Glover. Been campaigning the car for somewhere in the region of 20 years, rallied it every single year, always been a, a tarmac specialist and would uh, know the Otterburn ranges very well. Jeff Glover and Keith Barber Barker. Here's another of your favourite cars, Howard. The MG, no, the Vauxhall Chevette. What a beautiful car this is. Alex McClelland and Brian McClelland. The beautiful Vauxhall Chevette HSR. That's campaigned by Pentiricula, Terry KB, Tony Pond, Russell Brooks. Jim McCray, of course. Jimmy McCray. Did Jimmy McCray? Oh, yes, Jimmy yes, McCray. Yes, I don't know if Jimmy drove a Yes, he did drive a HSR. Who else? Another fantastic sounding car is the MGZR. This belongs to John Marshall and Chris Patterson. Sixteen hundred MGZR normally aspirated super sixteen hundred car. We're going to have to find out if that was driven by Gwyndaff at one point. Obviously, campaigned by Gwyndaff in sort of two thousand and two, two thousand and three, in the British Championship and the World Junior Championship. Yeah, I think he did a few rallies in that. Uh, in there, didn't he? Here's 65. This is John Nichols and Carrie Bates in the Escort at Mark II. I think no disrespect to Gwyndaff, but Junior meant it was 1600 rather yes. than the age of the driver. The age of the driver, that's right, yeah. Yeah. I only did one rally in that car, and I think that was the Pirelli uh, up here in, um, in, uh, in uh, Kielder. Yeah, in was, the foggy year, in 2000, oh, 2003, it was foggy. foggy. I don't know, I don't remember. We did, I think we finished. It was a bit of a it was a bit of a challenge, like to be honest. Uh, I can't remember much about it, to be honest. I remember all three, all three Pirelli, particularly anyway, started in the dark in Kielder, and it was thick fog. It was awful. And here's 69, which is um, Tom Pearson and Jim Stars in an Escort. Lovely looking car, beautifully prepared car there. A lovely Tom year. Pearson of the. Wheel and Tire Corporation. The lovely uh, Valdegard livery, so the Castrol across the bonnet, the uh, the Marlborough stripes on it, the uh, the sky blue wheels of Boreham. Looks well. As we see, 74. Joel Simpson and Sharon Turnbull in the Nissan Micra K11. Hotly followed by 42. Got to go back over the page for 42. John Trenholm and Alistair Trenholm. Alistair Trenholm in the Subaru, having another good run here in Otterburn again today. Running down the order, has some kind of problems earlier on. As we said, John, uh, earlier John has a couple of Subarus. He has a, a, an earlier GC8 as well that he, uh, he took out to Barbados. Uh, I think he just did that rally so he could be interviewed by you at the end of the stage. <laughs> that was hot. That was completely different to here. Um, you just had to, well, you woke up in the morning and you've hot, it was hot. Somebody said he'd lived in Barbados and he'd lived there quite some time and he'd never felt the temperature under 18 degrees. Can you imagine that? 18 degrees. I can't imagine 18 degrees today. <laughs> no, you can't. Above zero today. Anyway, back to the day. Oh, this is the wonderful little Renault. <coughs> oh, car number 70. Tim Walters and Jack Walters. Just listen to this now. That's all in one gear. What a lot of talk that car has. 58. This is Neil Andrews and Mark Broadbent in the beautiful Subaru. Yeah, but that little uh, Clio um, 
something else in fairness yeah uh, really next Renault Sport Clio V6 so that'll be a three litre V6 yeah mid-engine yeah the first ones were built they had two generations the first one was built by TWR in this country and then the second one's built by Renault Sport but that's the, a pretty rare car that all from a circuit championship yeah another little mini flying along this is 78 this is Roy Jarvis and Luke Greaves in a Morris Mini. Roy Jarvis, the uh, the owner of Raloy, so m many escort drivers out there are customers of, uh, of Roy Jarvis's business in Sherry Fortin, just near York. He is 84, beautiful car. This is Mike Pugsley and Mark Clackworth. Lovely little car. He supported the championship well all season, has Mike. I'm sure everybody uh, competing on the rallies appreciating it seems touchwood to see seems to be the end of the rain. I say that looking across at another dark cloud coming in, but um, it's been a little bit more stable at least for the last couple of stages for the competitors. Little Peugeot. 79. Been caught by a slightly bigger Peugeot. That's Bill Painter and Andy. Bill Painter and Andy Hall in the 106. Been caught by 77. Phil Morton and Joe Hind Morton in the 306. So 306, 106, we get uh, we get a 412. And, uh, and that's what we've been seeing, Sebastian Loban, isn't it? A 306 Maxi, and then he turns up to do a World Rally and bingo, he just beats them all. Beats them all. 50-year-old geezer turns up with his big, big mate, his big mate smoking a little cigar, drinking a bit of pastis, and he whoops them, doesn't he? Yeah, fair play. I'll just take the win. Number 94, Dave McIntyre and Alan Todd in the Vauxhall Nova. He hadn't won nine world champions by not being special, has he? No, that's right. I mean, he, he, we used to be used to seeing Loeb winning uh, week in, week out, but it was it was quite emotional, oh, wasn't he, to take another victory after such a long gap? He must be must be feeling very happy this afternoon, was not he? Uh, in fairness, and them guys at Citroen, they weren't half excited, weren't they? Yeah, that could rejuvenate their their budgets now for the next few years. They're going to need a bit of brass now when uh, Ogier goes there, aren't they? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because actually Loeb's just lost his drive because they've pulled <laughs> Peugeot out of the rallycross programme to uh, probably save a bit of budget to pay Auger. So he might be saying, well, can you find an extra car for me for a few rallies? Now I'm a rally winner again. I think that'll be happening, to be honest. I'm sure it's in his contract, no Loeb in the second car. Although they do seem to get on a little bit better now than they yeah, used to. Yeah, probably, actually. Yeah, There's a bit of water going under the bridge now. And they're not in the same team, are they, you know? And they're both from France. Oh la la, monsieur. <laughs> Translated means it won't rain today. Peut-être. Maybe it won't rain today. As the next little mini comes along. Number 90. Louise Thomas and Heidi Cook. Heidi Hancock. Heidi Woodcock even. In the little Rover Mini. The girl's going well. Oh, just as I said that, she runs onto three. I, I'm pleased to hear all your years of... Uh doing weather on the world championship haven't gone to waste you did learn some languages i did well you had to learn in france and corsica didn't you and if you you had to learn about the weather and you had to learn about the, the menu so i can do the menu and the weather situations pretty well as our next car comes along this be this car's been on its roof today 66 we've seen pictures of him going upside down and this is colin smith and fiona moore and to be fair when he was upside down he looked like 99 66 having a good run in the little Astra. Hot on his heels is 88. The little mini of Martin Melling and Carmel Venables in a mini Mayfair. Speaking of world championship restaurants, what's that amazing little restaurant in, near San Remo called? San, San Romulo. Yeah. Rally themed restaurant, quite a special place to go. Yeah, yeah.
fantastic uh, rally to go and do, a fantastic place to go gastronomically as well. I, uh, I did enjoy my uh, month in San Remo when I did it uh, years ago. Two cars hot on the heels of each other. 92, this is uh, Paul Cummings and Bob Irvin, hotly chased by 95, Brian Watts and Michael Houston in the beautiful Sunbeam Lotus. A very distinctive sounding car, the uh, Lotus Sunbeam. It's yeah, yeah. quite a, an offbeat sound for a four cylinder engine. Well, we're coming to the end of our, uh, our cars here today. We hope you've enjoyed our live coverage. We hope we've enjoyed uh, the coverage as much as Ryan and I have doing it. It's been a pleasure to have you with me, Ryan. You've been uh, uplifting and your knowledge, you're the font of all knowledge. Some of it useful, some of it useless. But thank you very much for making the effort and coming. It's a bit of a challenge to uh, get up here yesterday and you had a herd of cows to contend with this morning. You've tasted some of the best pork pies from Powell's Pork Pies in in um, Whitchurch, uh, so you can nip down there next time you're down as the, one of the last few remaining cars comes into view. This is car number 81, and this is uh, Adrian Dury in the little 106, and another Sunbeam Lotus, number 80, Peter Hetherington and Chris Hetherington. This, this, this is actually four Sunbeam Lotuses today. Of for some beam low tie, I would say, is it? What's a collection of low, tuss, <laughs> a low tie? And again, you, you talked about two or five. Another car that's gone yeah. up in value recently, yeah, the Sunbeam. And another two or five. 87. Marty, Kevin Harbour and Dave Tortoiseshell. And this was the Peugeot 209 on the entry list, but it's definitely a 205. Now, that is a rare car now, though, a 309. You don't see many Peugeot yes, 309s well, what was anymore. Yes, the name of the driver, Hoken Eriksson. Yes, he, he was, the British yeah. 309. Do you remember him? Yes, Brother to Kenneth Eriksson. Yep. And his co-driver was a guy called Johnny Johansson, who actually had a finger missing because he had frostbite in Sweden when he broke down one day and he lost a finger. He co-drove in the Mazda team for Hanu Mikola. How about that for a bit of uh, useless information? Oh, there you go, you see. You've got some in there. You've got some in there. Funny, I was just talking yesterday, the low sun, how difficult the low sun is. And I remember Mickler going off in the Mazda one. He was leading the RAC rally in the North Yorkshire Forest and he went off with the low with sun. The low sun, yeah. Isn't there a rally called the low sun in in northern... Mid midnight sun. Midnight but sun, is it? At, at this time on a Sunday afternoon, that's close yeah, enough, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Had the word sun in it, didn't it? We got there, really, didn't we? Hest. What's come in? Oh, another little min box. This is number 89, and this will be Barry Sternhouse and Sam Bold in a Morris Mini. And the next up is a 1275 GT. Now, this is a Clubman, and this looks different because of the square front. I know these things. And that is 83, Craig King and Claire Bird. I did my first ever, ever, ever 12 car. So I lied earlier, I said I did my first rally in an Avenger. But I did, we used to have some illegal 12 cars, as, as most people do. And I did my first illegal 12 car in a 1275 GT. Didn't go very far. This is 82. And this is Shane Gamble and Bob Ward in a Morris Cooper S. I actually made my comeback to 12 cars on Monday night. I co-drove on one for the first time in about six years. You really? How did you get on? We cleaned it. Oh, you cleaned it all. Well done. Well done. So I think I should just retire again now. Yes, retire when you're on the top. Good form of motorsport, though. We oh, uh, oh, we forget oh. there's a lot of cheap motorsport oh. about that you can get involved. It doesn't so have important. to be expensive. So important to get the youngsters involved at an early age, get them on the maps, get them reading. And again, you know, you don't have to be here competing. You can be here martial officiating timekeepers we need all kinds of people to get involved in our sport to keep it going it's difficult 86 is stephen robinson and neil mcdonald in the austin mini clubman followed by the nova of 91 that's malcolm mcdougall and kylie livingstone but just going back i'm involved with go motorsport and it's so important to get people back into the sport. The clubs are dying now. The biggest problem with the clubs in general is the age of the participants within the clubs. We've got no youngsters coming through to take the jobs, to take the organizing of the rallies, let alone competing on the events. So it's important now that we push the, the, the membership situation and 
get youngsters involved. But the problem with youngsters these days, they're all on their iPhones, they're all in there playing with their thumbs. They don't go out and, and, and socialise like we did, our generation, you know? Go to the pub, have a bit of crack, and then skid round in the cars later on. Do that in a controlled environment and get involved. So if you're thinking about getting involved, you want to have a go, you know, um, join your local motor club, that's the answer. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like we just talked about, do do navigational events, 12-car rallies, auto tests, all kinds of events that you can do very, very cheaply. We've had the big nod from Wayne over there, who's been ably using the camera all day, quietly just chundering away at it all. Wow. Thanks, Wayne's to just Wayne. Thanks to Wayne, who's done a wonderful job throughout the championship. Wayne, give us a wave. No, we, oh yeah, there's a wave from Wayne, and with that wonderful Wayne from Wave, all the Wubbleyews, 